your host, Jamie Serretta. On this podcast, we celebrate everything local. And this next business brings a lot of entertainment to the Valley. Everything from fashion to festivals. I'd like to introduce Steve and Jamie Levine of Steve Levine Entertainment and Public Relations. Hello, you two. Hi. Hi. It's so great to see you guys. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. How old is the business now? So we started in 2007. So... Yes, that's, uh, what is that? How many we don't years? do live math. <laughs> we never do live math. Give me a calculator. Yes. 2007, so, like and you've grown so much. 16 years now, yeah. 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 So let's go back, because Steve, we met in college back in the day at ASU, and Jamie, you went to ASU as well. Yep. Uh, tell me a little bit about, you You loved being a DJ even in your teenage years. Yeah, DJing was what I did as a, as a kid. I, I started in high school. I started when I was uh, 13, 14, and had my first DJ business at 15 before I could even drive. So yes, it was uh, something that was always in my blood. And then uh, I somehow started it again from scratch here in uh, Arizona when I came to college. And uh, who would have ever thought that DJing would turn into uh, what it's turned into today for me? Well, you think of what DJs are yes. now today, and then to create a whole business around live entertainment plus public relations, plus festivals, and you guys do so much. Give me kind of the gamut of what you do at Steve Levine Entertainment and Public Relations. Oh, it's my turn. No, it's your turn, Jamie. <laughs> Back to you. I'm yeah, going to be polite. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know it, it, our business is really unique, Jamie. It's yeah. like we do everything from we can plan a – uh, you know, 21st birthday party all the way to a 150,000 person festival. So we do everything from public relations, <laughs> marketing, e-marketing. We own our own ticketing platform. We uh, do talent booking. We um, do graphic design. Uh, we have, gosh, everything from decor to uh, production. So we do everything. So we're really a one-stop shop, which is a really unique sort of business model because you have you know, we have PR agencies that do PR and marketing, and mm -hmm. then there's other agencies that just do event planning, but we sort of do everything in our own uh, wheelhouse. So we don't really have to farm anything out. So we've really created a interesting and unique business that's been, uh, it's been really fun to see it grow and, uh, you know, doing something that we both really are passionate about. Yeah, and yeah. and and big names too. You're talking about the Chandler, Chandler Chamber Oscars Festival, which is huge now. Two weekends <laughs> bringing big names, yeah. a big talent to the valley. Also, Scottsdale Fashion Week is huge. Uh, what is the one that you have for kids? The fashion show for kids? Yeah, the Fashion Week for kids. So it's a it's a whole day long of fashion shows, uh, family friendly entertainment, sort of like a, a farmers market of sorts, and it's out at Desert Ridge Marketplace. We cast about. Uh, shy of 200 kids in about seven to eight fashion shows that happens for the duration of a Saturday. Um, and it's been such a great community event. It's free. It's open to the public. So we just saw, you know, once we started having kids, we're like, okay, what can we do for kids and families that's fun and cool? Mm -hmm. And that sort of fashion component was missing that we found um, from a from a kid's perspective. So we decided, okay, well, let's just create our own fashion week that focuses on kids and families. And it's been very successful since we uh, created it, have great partners, great sponsors. It's been super fun, uh, not only for us to be able to include our kids, yeah. but to really, you know, tap into a lot of these kids that uh, may not have had the opportunity to walk in a, in a fashion show ever, um, and we partner with foster kids and we let them come and walk. So a lot of give back and it, it's a real feel good community event. Yeah. And, and important for people to know that this is a local couple uh, behind these big experiences that we see and may bring our families to. And, and I bring up our years at ASU yes. because you think of what you've built from your 13, 15 year old as a DJ. I met you at the Dash Inn, where you were the DJ there, uh, yes. taking my requests that were relentless for the Macarena, thank you. You came uh, during non-bar hours though, <laughs> correct? Course. Yes. I was always studying, <laughs> I was um, reading when it was very quiet. Well, not you guys remember yet. the credit card statements, I used to read the Dash bookstore. Oh, yes. So I don't know if you remember that, mm -hmm. but uh, that was uh, pretty creative. It wasn't my doing by any means, yeah. but uh, it didn't help being a, uh, you know, working at a place that said bookstore on it right on campus. <laughs> and, and when you got your paychecks, was yeah, it? When you get your credit card statements, the parents were like, oh, well, you're spending a lot of money at the bookstore yeah. over there. So 
We're like, yeah, keep coming and spend money at the bookstore. It's it expensive. <laughs> Learning is expensive <laughs> at 1 a.m. on a Saturday yes, night, uh, isn't yeah. it? Well, back then, yeah, 1 a.m. was our cutoff time. was it yeah. for us. It was, there was no 2 a.m. back yeah. then. Yes. Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> Things have changed. Right? Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, good, the good old days at the Dash. And yes, the entertainment was, was a plenty. And that's where it really got started for me here in Arizona. Because then where did you meet Jamie? So Jamie came a little bit after that. So I had a DJ company and then I started working a bunch of different jobs and uh, didn't, didn't really know that the, the own business was going to work out yeah. yet. So I worked at a place called uh, Gameworks at uh, the Arizona Mills Mall. It was, there was a couple in the country at the time. It was owned by Steven Spielberg uh, in Sega and... Uh, DreamWorks SKG. So big names behind it. Super fun. I was in charge of the music and audio and games. I was what they call the play jockey. So it wasn't just a disc jockey. It was mm -hmm. somebody that was in charge of all the play. And we would do things from uh, have uh, police officers play virtual cop versus people on the street and give away prizes. So and I was real creative with everything I did. And of course, the music, we had GTV, which was GameWorks TV, and I got to control all the music. And one day, they're like, hey, we have a buyout, and uh, it's the Arizona Rattlers. And I said, oh, that's awesome. What can I get? Music and video, and we'll get you some stuff. But, hey, we need uh, you to be in charge of the dance team. And I said, oh, okay. Mm. Yes, I'm in. What I, I, I was, <laughs> Tell uh, me more. <laughs> I was uh, very single at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, yeah, but I was no, not thinking anything. And, yeah. and right away, I befriended a bunch of girls, not, not Jamie, actually, befriended a bunch of other girls on the team, mm -hmm. and I was just trying to – get my DJ mixes and how do I get and oh this person in charge also works with the sons and this person does this and I became friends with a couple uh, of the the head guys in charge and and uh, in the meanwhile I invited the girls to come in and uh, to a club I was DJing at as well called uh, Pompeii oh <laughs> yes uh, so you remember a collective Pompeii. laugh for those who remember Pompeii <laughs> yes yes yeah. Pompeii so they, for so they accepted yep. the invite yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and they came uh, during the day and I set up shop during the day for a uh -huh. few girls to you know make this mix and the, the mix was a uh, uh, Armin Van Helden, Funk Phenomenon, and the Beastie Boys, Intergalactic Planetary. Okay. Right? So remember that song, uh -huh. Intergalactic Planetary? Uh -huh, of course. And uh, the girls were were loving it. And I got to put like the the classic bomb at the end, you know, when you're doing like a dance routine, yeah. the bomb yes, stops, yes. And, and the girls are loving it, and it's great, and they're <laughs> dancing. Like, yeah, and, we can do and, this. and then I'm like, all right, this is awesome. I, I'm available to do this, you know, for anybody that needs it to make and, mixes. Yeah, 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 make yeah, mixes. yeah. This is this is way back. I mean, yeah. we're like dating ourselves because nor you know there was no like MacBook Pro. You could do it <laughs> yeah. on your MacBook. Like we like went into the nightclub right. to utilize the. the turn tables mm -hmm. and the speakers and the whole system there because at the time like there was no other way to do it mm -hmm. and we're record he's recording it uh, he's doing the mixes yeah. and uh you know and i was living on campus <laughs> at the time because i was going to asu mm -hmm. so they're like you live on campus you go and you meet the dj oh i'm like okay <laughs> so sure. you went by yourself no so, no a, no i came girls, with yeah. some of the other girls it was <laughs> okay. during the day though it was uh -huh. like right down the street because yeah. i was living on campus and he's there and you know, we come to find out that we're like both in the Greek system, mm -hmm. and um, well, and then I've taken. So back then, we had crates of records. Yeah. So I had I don't know probably like ten crates of records. And if you remember Pompeii, there was stairs to go downstairs. Mm -hmm. The DJ booth was upstairs from. So it's three levels of oh stairs, my. right? So all the girls bolt out of there when we're done, except for Jamie. Jamie helps me carry Aww. all of my records back to my car. Now, I used to have to pay like 15 or 20 bucks for this, right? So back then, <laughs> I'm like any fraternity <laughs> brother that would help me carry because it's like that's a lot of yeah. trips up and down. You can mm -hmm. only take one, maybe two if you're lucky. Right. And she helped me and I was like, Aww. hey, do you want to hang out? And uh, <laughs> we ended up hanging out and then... Uh, here we are. Here you are. 26 years later. With how many kids and a su successful yes, business? Yes, three kids and a business and uh, three dogs. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> life is life is grand. And and uh, that that always goes down back to that story. And uh, 
yeah, she was before she was 21. So she was 20 mm. and just turning 21 right after that. And yeah, here we are. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so do you remember why you offered to take well, this right? You know, you know, well, listen, <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm know, a nice girl yeah. and my parents always taught me to help. Yes. Which is what we're trying to tell our kids. Our kids would <laughs> never do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I just, you know, I was like, he's got so much stuff to carry. Yeah. Like, the least I could do is offer. Yeah. You know, I mean, what a jerk. He took me up on carrying the heavy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, and then, yeah. you know, I just thought that, you know, I would help. And yeah. then, you know, so And I didn't even it. take her to the Dash Inn. I took her to Timberwolf Pub afterwards. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and I was like... God, I didn't even bring her to the place where I could have all the hookups, right? Yeah. So I took her over hey, there. Steve, wherever yeah. 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 And I've never even been privacy. to Timberwolf. I think I was trying to impress her. Timberwolf is a big step up from the yeah. Dash. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of was back then. <laughs> <laughs> She'd been to the Dash. Uh, Maybe she hadn't been to the yeah. Timberwolves. Oh, Little wait till she finds out about Sawmill. I mean, that would be really big. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> Sawmill. I love Sawmill. Uh, yeah, of course. Those are all of our spots, right? We turned those into something fun. Yeah, and and you turned this um, lifestyle and career into something fun and successful for the family. What was it? It's, it's so beautiful that you have a love of live entertainment. And Jamie, we we mentioned that you were um, a, a Rattlers dancer, but yeah. we didn't get to. You worked for the Phoenix Suns. What were you doing? I did. So I danced for the Rattlers for four years, sort of the whole time I was in college. And then I got hired by the Phoenix Suns um, my senior year at ASU Mm -hmm. to be an intern in the marketing department. Uh So I interned there from 2000, 2001. When I graduated ASU, they hired me full time and I ended up working there for 11 years. And um, I did everything from marketing, PR, um, community relations. Um, I I did a lot of stuff during my tenure there. And it was it was amazing. So you know, I got hired by the Colangelos during that era, and I worked, you know, when in Mike D'Antoni and Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire mm-hmm. and Shaw Marion, sort of that real special era of the Phoenix Suns, and it was it was pretty spectacular. And you know, at that time, you know, Steve and I were dating, and I would bring Steve in to do a number of things, so we worked together. Yeah. And you know, the conversation between us was always, you know. If and when I leave the Suns, you know, let's do something together when the time is right. And so, you know, it took a lot of talking and planning and, you know, you know, timing was everything Mm -hmm. um, for when I left at, you know, I guess we could back up because then in 2007 is when he really started Steve Levine Entertainment, Mm -hmm. which was just Steve Levine SLE at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was still at the Suns, but I was helping, you know, uh, as much as I could. Right. You're a helper. You I'm a helper. That's, That's right. I carry here. records. Yes. That's right. I carry things. <laughs> yes, of course. Always willing yeah. to help. And then... Um, At this point, we're married. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's vested through yeah, the marriage. Yeah, she has. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah. congratulations because yeah. you have a marriage of 20 years yeah. coming yeah. up in what? October. October 16th, So, congratulations yeah. on that. That's yes, so wonderful you. to hear that a couple who met out of ASU and, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, go Devils <laughs> that, that are so happy and successful today. Yeah, thank and you. then you have the marriage of the live entertainment and the public relations. So, it yeah. just makes such beautiful sense. Yes. But how did you know when it was time for you to leave the Suns and join him full time? Uh, <laughs> yeah, That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's sort of twofold. You know, yeah. one, uh, you know, we were, we had just started our family, so we had our first son. And, you know, while working for the sons was very rewarding and great, but it was also demanding. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's 44 home games. I would be at the office at eight, and if there was a game, I wouldn't get home till, you know, sometimes 10, 30, 11. Yeah. You know, I would miss that opportunity to see our son. So it was it was timing, and it was, I, I did everything I needed and wanted to do while I was there. So the time was right. You know, there was the sale of the team, and it just sort of everything sort of fell into place, and it just, it was, it was my time was up there, and it was, um, it was it was bittersweet, but it was great because it just it it made more sense. I wanted to be a mom. Mm-hmm. I also wanted to work. I wanted the flexibility. I just didn't have that, and that's okay. That's for me. Right. It was, that and was she him. started getting offers too, it was unsolicited. So oh. she hadn't even hit the market, and uh, people were, oh, if you come work for this agency or that agency, mm-hmm. I mean, just sending her emails, and I'm like. Wait a second. Do I need to send her an email? <laughs> I said. Do I need to carry well, no, her this records? This was a real <laughs> conversation. This was a real conversation. I'm like, uh, so you're saying you're worth that much money, uh, and you could come work with me, and I don't have to hire somebody for that much money. This is a really good start. We can build a new PR team. And she's like, well, let's think about this. Can I make my own hours? 
Can I have yeah, negotiate? This, yes. Do we have to have a dress code? Can I have, can, can I have work from home? Just kidding. Yes, that yes, didn't yes. exist then. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> but we kind of, so, you know, we kind of yeah. then we, you know, we kind of created our own way of doing things. And for me, that was so important yeah. from leaving the corporate space to be able to say, okay. I want a blank canvas. We want to create it our way. Yeah. We don't want people to feel like there's a mold that they have to fit into. And we're going to do things the way that we want to do it. We're going to take on clients that we're passionate about taking on. We're not just going to do, you know, you know, whatever in terms mm -hmm. of like a client. Like it's got to be sports and entertainment related. We're going to add and public relations to Steve Levine Entertainment. And we're going to really build out that marketing and PR function because mm -hmm. yeah. that's what I've been doing. I mean, he obviously has a, a vast knowledge of, of marketing and PR, but he was really focusing on the events and the production and the new business. Mm -hmm. So it really made sense for me to come in and really build up that marketing arm of our business. Mm -hmm. And then the first client we signed was full circle back to the Arizona Rattlers. Yep. Uh, so it was pretty funny me? how it worked. And, oh uh, my God. Yeah, so yeah. we did not only PR, we could do events. So, uh -huh. And that's where we realized we have so much more mm -hmm. where there's plenty of PR companies and there's great ones out there. Yeah. But we also can bring people to the party or bring people to an event, yeah. get word out a little differently and also produce yeah. everything that goes around it. So it was a really mm. good place for us to be that must have felt like and, confirmation yeah. you did the right thing you're yes. on the right path yeah. right, I, I i tear up on this podcast uh, all the time because i love yeah. hearing people's stories yeah. and it's such a i think a, as you talked about building out your business what yeah. you want it to look like etc you're also taking a risk oh yeah uh, you know because now the livelihood is all on you yeah you, you don't have that paycheck you can count on yes. every two weeks so what was that like as far as uh, you're on your own now, both of you. It was together. scary. Yeah. No, it was scary. And we talked a lot about, you know, because I was carrying our health insurance yeah. because I was, you know, and it was like, okay, if we're going to do this, like we, it's scary and it's big and it's, it's, it's nerve wracking, right? Like you said, you own your own business. It's all on us, mm -hmm. everything that we do. And it was, um, you know, when we decided we were doing it, like we were both all in. Mm -hmm. And it, but listen, it wasn't easy and it's not easy mm -hmm. and it, it, it takes a lot and it's, it's, uh, it's been interesting to navigate. I think we've, we've navigated it because we are both doing two different things in our business and we stay in our lane. We certainly cross over, um, you know, for our festivals and our big events when marketing and PR is needed, but you know, he stays in his lane and I don't question him and he doesn't question me. And it, you know, we've, we've seemed to figure it out from, you know, for the majority, but it get, you know, nothing's perfect, but you know, it was scary at first. And there were times, you know, especially during, COVID. you know, COVID when we had to reassess, you know, and the then COVID it was, was horrible. That was a bad experience, obviously entertainment shut down, decimated, right? So in events and anything we did. So, but I still went to work every single day. I was like, if they stop me, it's uh, well, essential. I'm an essential business because to myself, I'm an essential business. Who's to tell me I'm and I get it. I'm not essential to like like a store is and things like that. But for peace of mind, I had to go to my office every single day mm -hmm. and we just, OK, what's going to happen when that, you know, w w the lights at the end of the tunnel. But that tunnel is really far right now, so we can't see it. And and uh, we definitely learned a lot and we've rebuilt since then and, and rebuilt in a much better way. Um, and we're, we're grateful and thankful for that, but it's still every, every day running a business. It's, it's, we, you know, we, we put a, not only do we take care of our family, but we take care of a lot of other families. And it's really, you want to make sure that that's, we throw parties for a living. We put on events and people want us to do that, but we have to make sure we do it enough so that it really is lucrative for everybody to to live the way they want and stay with us. And that's, you know, keeping employees is something else that we work really hard to do and we know that it's just uh especially when you get we hire really young too right out of school so we're giving lots of people that opportunity to come and learn and i can't tell you the the how great we always feel when we get these stories back of i'm working at such and such agency in new york or this tv film studio in london and and i'm like okay perfect i'm gonna bring my kids by for a tour yes. <laughs> you know, so, Pay I mean, back. we've yeah. done we've done some of the coolest yeah. experiences in our life because of people that we've touched along the way Aww. and, and uh, yeah so it's been really rewarding and it's funny when we first got married uh, Jamie says so when are we packing up and moving to California because yeah. I'm from California yeah. 
And I guess every girl that grows up born and raised in Tempe, Arizona, <laughs> cannot wait to get out of Arizona. Oh, no. She went from Tempe for her entire life. Yeah. Where did you go to high school? She did go to Mesa to for a minute, right? She Corona. went to Mesa for a minute, but uh -huh. then she's back at ASU. Yeah. And she's there, you know, she's so now she's in Tempe again. <laughs> and so I'm like, I feel like you're back Scottsdale. on Tempe. I'm like, I'm just going to move to Scottsdale. It's a little Scott, bit further. Uh, Scottsdale, she's like, uh, Okay, fine. Let's do Scottsdale. But oh. uh, I remember taking her to California, and I said, "Okay, here's what traffic looks like." Yeah. And yeah. we for hours drove the other way on traffic, and she never said another word yeah. about because my wife does not like traffic at all. Yeah. So I was like, "This is the this is the one reason we cannot <laughs> live in, in in here." So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a great run, and we're excited to keep building and and taking the brands we have, building new brands, starting new new events with new. Okay. Partners and collaborations mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. How many employees do you guys have now? So I don't know the uh, exact. I think it's like 14, oh, wow. 14 now. Yeah. So it's a good crew. Uh -huh. I think uh, we've learned that uh, we're seasonal. So it's really important to have a lot of the people available during event time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a really uh, awesome program over summer to give people a lot of time off and breaks. We want time off. We want a break. So I say we live the teacher's life over summer, right? Yeah, yeah. So we nice. get to, so, and every once in a while you have summer school, right? That's yeah. my kids because they have something going on for high school or, or we'll uh, get an event here or there, but there's not a lot of events that happen here. So if we're doing events over summer, it's usually outside of Arizona. Yeah. California. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Beach. yeah That's right. California. <laughs> yeah. So this That's year right. we got to, and any event I go to, yeah. I make, I make her crazy. I'm looking behind the scenes. I'm looking to see where they got something from. I'm taking I mean, pictures. I mean, so we just got this, back from Paris. We're at yeah. the Olympics. You were and, at the Olympics? And I'm like, yeah. wait, wait, hold on. I got to go check this out. Yeah. I'm at like the stands where the beach volleyball is. And yeah. I'm going under the stands looking at the stands. Because, he wants to see what kind of like fabric it's uh, like, you know, it's made with or it's like covering. I'm like, like this is what a do great, the stairs look like? But, a, you know, he's, he's always, you know, right. looking. I'm like, this is a great setup. If we ever do a national b volleyball tournament here yes. somewhere. <laughs> Tempe Beach, right? We don't know. We've done it before years right. ago. I want to make sure I'm looking at the this. If this is good enough for the Olympics, it's definitely good enough for me. So right. I'm just looking at, at different things everywhere we go to make sure. That's and then, research. By the way, research. it catches on because she's like, have you seen porta potties that look like this yet? <laughs> <laughs> and she calls me over. I'm like, yeah, that's old news. I've seen those things three years ago. <laughs> I mean, so, it makes yeah. sense. So, yeah. so what, besides that, um, I don't know, coding underneath the stands, what else did you learn no, about the was, Olympics that you bring it back? Was, it was just, I don't know, did you see the Eiffel Tower Stadium, right? Yeah, so, yeah. right, that was cool where the beach volleyball was. And I went in 96 to the first mm -hmm. beach volleyball that existed oh, wow. when it was in Atlanta. So I want to see, wow, this is crazy. They built this stadium just for this yeah and then i'm looking okay they're having that as a paralympics uh sport as well I'm like, how are they going to turn this with all stairs into something that now is for handicap so i'm always looking at that and i just i, I didn't explain that to her mm -hmm. but i'm like i have three minutes to go look and see how they built this because of course the second i get back sean from my office is like Hey, so did you take any pictures? What did you notice? What did you see? So like my team's Everyone's already still. asking me. So I'm like, and I can answer that question now uh, because yes, I did. As a matter of fact, here's all my pictures. <laughs> here's what I got. And my uh, kids and my wife want to, you know, kill me while I'm yeah. out there because they're like, stop taking pictures of everything. But to me, that's my museums. That's yeah. my, the that, grind never that's stops. my never. Yeah. That, never. That's, you know, never that's my Mona Lisa. Like, check yeah. it out. That's cool. I want to, I want to. And Olympics is a spectacle, seeing an For event sure. of that on that side. And, and you're and, the best of the best. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. So, yeah. globally. And, and Global. I'm paying attention to entertainment. What do they do on a, on a international scale? What, yeah. what could I do? What little things could I bring back? And what do we already do better? Mm -hmm. Right? So... Yeah, very cool. So let's talk about things that are coming up for you guys because sure. we're going into the fall, which we know yeah. is event season. Yeah. Uh, what's happening with Scottsdale Fashion Week? Yeah, so we are doing Scottsdale Fashion Week September 26th to the 29th. And, you know, it's fun because we take it to multiple locations in Scottsdale. Mm. Um, so we've got four different locations. We've got, I want to say, eight designers. Um, and uh, we're very, very excited because it's always a sellout. It always um, 
brings amazing designers, but it's also, you know, the difference for us too is, you know, we create an entertainment piece of this, right? So it's, there's fashion, but there's also live music. There's some sort of installation or activation. Mm -hmm. So you're, we're creating uh, a memorable evening out for mm -hmm. people, which is super fun. Um, and then we've got Fashion Week for Kids. Like you said, that's in November. Mm -hmm. It's super cute event for all the kids. And then we go into... Yeah, these are our public events. So yeah. we'll do some other, we, we do some community events where we'll, we produce events for like the whole uh, city of, um, well, uh, the community of Eastmark. Mm -hmm. So oh, and that's yeah. super fun because it's the same type of event, but just for a community that's yeah. private. Yeah. So we get to really recreate some of the stuff that you remember with our big block parties for like a Halloween spooktacular. Yeah. So it's awesome because 7,000 residents are getting our touch on everything. It's not necessarily to the public, but it's still an yeah. awesome event and they they love it. So that's, that's exciting to do those types of events on the non uh, weekends that we have no public events going on. Light the um, night. We have light the nights. Another yeah. one. So that Kimi is public. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing that for years. Wow. We do three, uh, three cities. We do Vegas, Phoenix and Tucson. Yeah, so that's so that's that's, all, that's a great give back for us. We always try to give back, and and uh, working with Leukemia and Lymphoma Society has been uh, been special to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get to be creative on what we how we light up the night for them. And, yeah, you know, diff different. It's always it's in the crossover between a family event to a walk to a, a festival a festival to a corporate yeah. party is. The cool stuff is the cool stuff and yeah. everybody wants different versions of that whether it's something that lights up or something that you know is like a, a sparkler that goes off in the air or something cool um, we're able to showcase those at all the different events and then the holidays will come up we'll have a lot for the holidays and then uh, of course we kick into spring with our festival season yes. so yes yeah, so an ostrich festival is is the big one for us it's that's, uh, our, ba that's uh, our baby yes. we say that's yeah. a, that's that's our baby that yeah. we you know took over about Seven years ago. So 2015, we took yeah. that over, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and I just have to say too, and you you grew, you went to high school here. Yeah. Sure okay. Mm -hmm. So you know, as a local resident, mm -hmm. like I grew up going to the ostrich festival. Mm -hmm. We went as a family forever and ever and ever, and so we get this RFP, you know, nine years ago about the ostrich festival. And I couldn't believe it. I said, oh, my God, I grew up going to the Ostrich Festival. So for me, you know, we talk about stuff being full circle all the time. You know, I grew up going every single year mm -hmm. with my family. We go and we get awarded this festival, which is for me, it's like this is a homegrown festival. Yeah. And now we get to take this uh, over. And, you know, and I say this with like a lot of love, like we have transform this festival into something that is like I'm so proud of because it's people talk about it we've Steve has fought so hard to yeah, I'm gonna get upset talking about <laughs> not upset it makes excited. me yeah it makes me uh, very passionate yeah. because you know I've seen him work so hard to be able to get this festival yeah. for two weekends to be able to fight for people during mm -hmm. COVID when they couldn't fight for themselves to yeah. be able to, you know, bring this back. And, you know, it's it's been really special. Yeah. And also our kids like this better than Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, well, I'm sure so you know, mommy so and daddy that. have yeah. uh, VIP I access. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, yeah. I don't quite understand that one, though. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm more, a roller, the more than Disney. <laughs> I'm a roller coaster junkie. You play and, all kinds of stuff there. And, and I take my kids. Uh, my kids have followed in those steps. Uh, uh, too, so much that Jamie is very annoyed because every time we go somewhere, the first thing my kids do is Google every roller coaster that exists. Oh, really? Like and, what's an amusement park yeah. in the area? And by yeah. the way, yeah. they don't need to Google it anymore. Wherever we're going or wherever I'm going, they let me know exactly what coasters and oh. what theme parks are there. <laughs> so I'm like, this is pretty oh, amazing. That is. And, uh, but obviously I love coasters. We don't have coasters, but yeah. I don't know. Something about the kids growing up there and being yeah. a part of it and they just love it. But they so. also do. It's fun, too, because, you know, as we're talking, you know, we sit and we talk about what artists we want to bring to the Ostrich yes. Festival. And, and you ask the kids. And the we kids ask the kids. And now, <laughs> you know, in the last couple of years, the kids have been a part of yeah. the discussion. They've been at the oh table and we've been talking about did it. Did they suggest Young Gravy? They did. Ah, yes. stop it. They did. So they did. They suggested <laughs> Young Gravy uh -huh. and um, uh, Paul Russell, you know, uh -huh. my little yes, boo yes, thing. Yes, yes, yes. That's and so then you, they, I will tell you a little secret. Almost us. all of the entertainment, if not all, 
comes by other women or children. I learned oh. that a long time ago. <laughs> yes, so that is giving true. one secret to all of the oh. success we've had. And that was the same way when I was a DJ. Really? If I play the music that that all the women want, well then guess what? The guys are gonna go home happy. They may not like me because I didn't put their song on right yeah. away, but I always made sure I had all the music. And it's the same way for who do, who do they who do the kids want? Because the kids and and the women to me that controls where you go and who yeah. comes to the event. And of course the guys are happy and yeah. they get at one every once in a while. We'll get you know. So, <laughs> but uh, I always say that uh, my kids get they feel really good when they're involved. They yeah. also tell me how much they hate an artist when they have no idea who it is. Oh. And that's usually anybody that's over. Yeah, some of the 90s or something. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to do a 90s throwback night. They're like, yeah. dad, this is not cool. Like, and then they see the guys like, oh, wait, I've seen him on TV. This or I've seen him. He's been on TikTok. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it's uh, we get lucky. A lot of times we'll have someone, then they're on the Macy's parade. Oh. And my kids are watching the parade. They're like, oh, dad. They got him after you. I said, "Well, they did get him. They didn't <laughs> get him after." Right. But I'm glad right. you're comparing right. us to what's yes. on the parade. I remember one year, oh, Nelly was on the parade after Nelly did ours. Oh, I said, "Look, Nelly's been doing things a long time. They have no idea." I'll take the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Found him. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome! Funny. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks. Oh my God, yeah. that's what I appreciate the passion. And you know, as a local Arizona girl, and, and being in my hometown and telling Arizona stories, I, I love hearing your passion for what you guys do here and how how much it means to you that you're creating new memories for families yeah. who live here. And, and Steve, to think of um, you know you and I meeting while I'm dancing the Macarena, <laughs> <laughs> and you're the DJ, and then I, I moved away a couple you know 14 years, and I come back and I see. SLE entertainment everywhere. I'm like, Steve Levine's all over this town. <laughs> he did it. And I was so excited. And so I, I hold awesome. a lot of Thanks. pride and i um, very happy for you guys. So when you guys aren't throwing the events, what are you liking in Arizona? What are you loving? What, you're, what are you doing? What is an event in town that you can't miss well, for socially? Question. Yeah, without the work. Let's see. Yes. That's a great question. For me and Steve, I would say we love the Phoenix Open. Don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, no. we do. do we, we no, do. We no, love, we do. We love, we, love, we love the Phoenix Open. We love going to the golf. We love, we always have, we have a great group of friends that we yeah. go with. And so that's super fun because we're not necessarily working and we can actually enjoy ourselves. Um, what else locally? I think oh. so recently as the kids have gotten older, it's been really tough to go out to support all the other events yeah. in town because we're like, if it's not one of our events, there's almost an event every day for one of our kids. Yeah. So it's we've really... And that's doing, important. We've come yeah. to enjoy, you know, school night out and yeah. uh, curriculum night. And yes. well, uh, also, you know, what, you know what we do a lot of? Yeah. We go to Gamage and we see musicals. Yeah, because the kids are the theatrical, yes. so, right? So also, yes. the kids love theater. So mm -hmm. we do the we do that stuff. But we do love to support the big events. Whenever mm -hmm. we can support one of the big events, and and uh, you know whether we do business with them or not, it's yeah. fun to let you know let loose every once yeah. in a while. Go to a opening and new restaurants coming in town and. We're invested in a bunch of uh, places still too mm -hmm. from my DJ days. So yeah. I'm still heavily involved in a, a lot of uh, nightlife. So uh, don't Give necessarily go. So so we're uh, partners in uh, still in uh, uh, Casamigos mm -hmm. and we're still involved with District and Maya. And uh, you, maybe you'll find us there once in a blue moon, but not so yeah. much. It's more so somebody's calling me, hey, my son's going to ASU. Can you get him into <laughs> yeah. that place? But yeah, of course, we love it. Uh, I, I went to my fraternity reunion and uh, these ki these kids, uh, these, these uh, college, college, yeah, college kids, kids come college up to me and they're like, hey, we wanted to meet you. We promote at Casa Amigos. And I was oh like texting Les, who's the main partner. I'm like, oh my God, you have some of my guys from my fraternity promoting to me. And for about three weeks, they nonstop text me, hey, got a table with your name on it, free <laughs> bottle for you. Is you're, you're a legend. I'm oh like, my God. thank you so much. I will not be taking you up on this <laughs> offer tonight. But uh, Backyard, we're, uh, we're in oh, with all the, the new Backyards yes, yeah. and we love Backyard. That's super fun to Well, go again, and, that's family friendly yeah. so yes. we can take our kids, yep. you know. Yeah. But our kids are so active. So the weekends are full of sports mm -hmm. and activities that, you know, we don't want to miss anything. So we're yeah. at everything and, you know, Steve coaches every single team. You coach? Well, coaches it's it. another secret. So yeah. you want another secret? Yeah, I want another if secret. If you coach, you control the kid's schedule. And oh. if I can control the kid's <laughs> schedule, <laughs> guess who can be at all the games? This is, you're dropping knowledge, Steve. Thank you for the secret. So this, this dad misses no sports, almost no sports. 
And what other dad can say that? He because, knows how to schedule. So, this is he, good. We, so. we, we, he is a weasel, is what yeah. we call him. It's, 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 it's good, good stuff. Uh, and then mostly the last part I was going to say about the question you asked earlier was, I like experiences. I love experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my 50th, we're going to take 20 friends to have an experience uh, in Ibiza wow. uh, at one of my favorite restaurants in the world. It's mm-hmm. called Leo. So it's a dinner experience. It's uh, entertainment. You just feel like you, you've you gone somewhere else that just doesn't exist. And it only works in certain environments as much as I would love to see it pop up here. But when there's something in Vegas that pops up or, you know, as we talked about with the Olympics or anything, if there's something that makes sense. Maybe it's not every year, but maybe it's an NBA All-Star game in a city that could be a great experience. Mm-hmm. That's more what I'll, I'll, I'll really make sure we're intentional, put that on the calendar and we'll take, or a concert, right? Yeah. We knew kids loved AJR, so we put it on a concert. I knew that Jamie loves J-Lo, but unfortunately J-Lo canceled her tour. Yeah. We were headed to Atlanta right now to go see J-Lo, mm-hmm. so we were gonna have to reschedule you, but instead, no, what? instead <laughs> well, thank you, J-Lo. J-Lo rescheduled for you, so we're <laughs> I good. I made a call to J-Lo. Yeah, right. so, yeah. Her little blinds so, had J- me on Jamie the cutting had, board. She had no idea, so just the other uh, day she goes, she says, what, why, what's on the calendar? Where does it say Jamie and Steve out of town? And I said, oh yeah, that was a surprise. I was taking you to go see uh, with one of your best friends and uh, and uh, her husband as well, but uh, sorry, it didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. So, But we'll get another one on the calendar. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what we we do on I guess our free time when we have free time. Yeah, and that's what you wanted. Yeah, yeah. to be able to be there for your family and yes. watch them grow up. Yeah, and I love that you invite them to the table as you're scheduling new talent and thinking about what the family experience will be like uh, each year. It's so great to see you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. So happy for you guys. Thanks, Jamie. Congratulations yeah. on all your successes. Thank you, Jamie. It is Steve Levine, Entertainment and Public Relations. Thanks for listening to Jamie's Local Love, the podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Serretta. Our technician is Tom Heidinger. Our editors are Lorraine Shearing and Gina Coy. Do you know a business worthy of some local love? Email me at jserretta at azfamily.com. Follow us at facebook.com slash serretta and Instagram at Serretta News. Make sure to subscribe and give us a five-star review, please. And tell your friends about the podcast and the businesses we feature to show your local love. You can find us on Apple, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Jamie's Local Love, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast.